Hi, this is Ioseph Xenogiannis and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 84 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of a patient who developed stent thrombosis in two vessels. And this is the angiogram. The patient had previous stenting of a left main trifurcation with a large ramus, circumflex, and LAD, and presented with chest pain and ST segment changes. Emergency angiogram did demonstrate thrombosis of both the ramus stent as well as the circumflex stent. You can see in different projections the filling defects inside the circumflex stent as well as inside the ramus stent. So the goals of therapy in cases like this of coronary thrombus formation, both in stent and in de novo lesions, there are two main goals. The first one is to prevent propagation of the thrombus or formation of new thrombus. And this is done through a combination of anticoagulation as well as antiplatelet therapy. In almost all cases, heparin is given. And in stent thrombosis, it's usual to give an intravenous uh, antiplatelet agent, either 2B3A or Cangrelor with eptifibatide being given in this case, and uh, an oral P2Y12 inhibitor. And in cases of stent thrombosis, a more potent one, such as prasugrel or ticagrelor, is preferred. So our patient received unfractionated heparin, eptifibatide, and prasugrel. And the second major goal is, of course, to restore coronary flow. If there is some flow, then uh, we go straight to assessing the thrombus size. In this case, there was no flow, so the first step is to get a wire through the thrombus and perform balloon dilation with a small balloon, typically 2.0, to restore some flow and see what the next step should be. So in this case, uh, we engaged and tried to wire into the circumflex. It is not uncommon to have difficulty advancing wires through previous stents, with the wires sometimes getting stuck on the struts against the wall. And actually, sometimes using a loop at the tip of the wire can be advantageous to prevent the wire from going under the stent struts. We were eventually able to advance a workhorse wire into the circumflex. However, we did have a much more difficulty into the ramus. There were likely several layers of stents uh, there, and the workhorse wire could not be advanced into the ramus. What to do next? There are different ways to approach this, but the two key ways are to change the wire or get a microcatheter for support. So in our case, we inserted a small microcatheter, a caravel, close to the origin of the ramus branch, and then tried to wire again. We still had difficulty, but then after using a polymer jacketed, non-tapered wire, see on black, we were able to actually wire into the ramus branch through the occluded stents. So here we are, we do have a wire into the ramus, we do have a wire in the circumflex. It is very important to also place a wire in the lady, because sometimes treating the thrombus in the other vessels may result in thrombus being pushed back into the patent vessel, which is the LAD in our case, and this could have catastrophic consequences. So securing access in the vessel with a wire can facilitate treatment if such a problem occurs down the line. What do we do next? We assess the thrombus size. If there is a small thrombus, then we typically go to balloon and stand. But if um, there is a large thrombus, then it depends on whether we have ongoing ischemia or not. Our patient is clearly having ongoing chest pain and ischemia. And then if there's a large thrombus, trying to reduce the thrombus burden can help uh, optimize the results of PCI. And this can be done usually with aspiration thrombectomy or the penumbra system, or sometimes by deep seating the guide or aspirating through a guide extension. And these are the options again for thrombectomy. Uh, rheolytic thrombectomy is almost never done these days, but it's done, thrombectomy is done mainly through aspiration, the penumbra system, or through the guide or guide extension. And there is a variety of aspiration thrombectomy catheters from various manufacturers and different profiles all the way from six, seven, or eight uh, French compatibility. In this particular case, uh, we tried uh, to perform thrombectomy with the penumbra system. Unfortunately, it did not cross through the stent struts. However, we were able to advance and export six friends and did some aspiration, followed by dilation with a 2.0 millimeter balloon. 
And we did that in both vessels, both into the circumflex as well as the ramus. That did restore some undergrade flow into the circumflex, although still we have a large thrombus burden. And um, uh, things are still hard on the ramus. There's still quite a large thrombus burden in there. However, we did several rounds of uh, aspiration thrombectomy balloon angioplasty without improvement. Therefore, we decided to use a stand. And sometimes the stand can compress the thrombus and restore undergrade flow. And this is actually exactly what happened here in the ramus. Putting the stand into the ramus did actually improve the flow. We did uh, intravascular ultrasound before actually placing the stand. And the previous stand appeared to be well expanded. So it's unclear the reason for the thrombosis. And it's also possible that the expansion happened because of the multiple dilations we did during this procedure. Getting flow into the circumflex was more challenging. Again, we did several rounds of aspiration thrombectomy. We did imaging. The stand was expanded. There remaining some intraluminal fillet defects, but there was some undergrade flow. And after multiple attempts, uh, uh, we decided to stop the procedure. The patient actually had uh, marked improvement of the chest discomfort during the procedure. So several lessons from this case. First, in terms of stent thrombosis, sometimes it's hard to advance a wire through the thrombosed stent. And one way to get around it is to use a microcatheter that provides extra wire support and allows reshaping and exchanges of the guide wire. Another one is to use a different guide wire with a polymer jacketed wire being advantageous, especially if the tip is looped so as to avoid going under the stent stretch how to approach uh, thrombosis. The first step is to get a wire and then do aspiration if it's a large thrombus burden or balloon angioplasty with a small balloon. Intravascular imaging is important to understand the reason causing stent thrombosis. And then finally, there is a uh, need for intensive uh, antithrombotic and antiplatelet therapy. These are the cases to administer Cangrelor or a 2B3 inhibitor as well as the more potent oral P2Y12 inhibitors, such as prasugrel and ticagrelor, with uh, the prasugrel ticagrelor continued in many patients indefinitely after this event. Thank you.